Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live here at Dell Storage Forum in Boston. We're at the convention center on the waterfront, and I'm here with my co-host for the next segment, the only other guy in the room with a tie on, John <laughs> MacArthur. Uh, I'm with Wikibon.org. John is a principal at uh, Walden Technology Partners and a Wikibon, major Wikibon contributor. John actually runs the Peer Insight uh, program for Wikibon, which is our community end user practitioner program uh, where we have these regular meetups. So John, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank the you, good to we see you. We were together last week uh, at IBM Edge, yeah. you know, good event. We're here at Dell Storage Forum, second year for us at Dell Storage Forum, um, and the second year of the converged Dell Storage Forum, if you will, where they brought in the Equalogic right. and Compellent Assets. Um, this show to me looks a little bit bigger than last year. Uh, they have a bigger venue. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see it's in Boston as opposed to Orlando, because yeah. uh, <laughs> it's a lot easier for us, but... Uh, <laughs> it is easier. <laughs> but, uh, some of us, anyway. And um, so, we're talking about Dell and the transformation that Dell has been through in the last four or five years. You know, it used to be, John, that Dell resold other people's storage. Right. And uh, Dell has probably been, I would say, if not the most, one of the most aggressive acquirers of storage companies and certainly in the last three or four years, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they, they definitely uh, needed to um, replace some portfolio that where they were OEMing from LSI, they were OEMing from, or reselling EMC. Um, they wanted to have more of their own content, so they, they got pretty aggressive on the acquisition side. And they did, you know, a little bit of the HP strategy, go chase some big guns, and then they and then they also did a little bit of more of the IBM strategy, which is go get some technology where maybe they didn't have to pay quite so much for some technology. So, so. by that you mean going after Equalogic, spending a was a billion dollars in Equalogic? Yeah, so Equalogic was an expensive a acquisition. Right. Compellent, right. Compellent was an ex relative. Billion plus. Well, it was. No, Compellent was, was less than a billion. Was it was point nine, right? Yeah, point, uh, you know, don't quote me. So, um, But less than half less of what they would have paid for three par. Less than half of what they paid for three par, and I think more in their wheelhouse, frankly. Yeah, that's what I tweeted this morning. I said that, so here's the thing, John. Dell's got more cash in the balance sheet than any other storage company, okay. with the exception of Oracle, and yeah. I don't really consider Oracle a storage company. So here's the stats. Dell's got $14 billion in the balance sheet. Um, EMC 6, NetApp 5, uh, HP 8, IBM 12, and Oracle 30. Yeah. So, or, I mean, Dell can compete with anybody at the acquisition game, can it? Sure, you don't always, you know, you don't always acquire with cash, but yeah. Um, right, but, but lately but these days, people have been acquiring with yeah. more cash deals, right? That's true, that's true, because you're not sure the direction of the market, I guess, but. Um, but uh, yeah, they with that with that balance sheet, and I, you know, I expect them to continue to stay aggressive on the acquisition side. I mean, think about think across their portfolio, they've they've got the Power Vault line. I know you just had Brett Roscoe up, uh, so they've got the Power Vault line. Are there is there more pr um, intellectual property that they could own there? I think I think they use uh, Mega Raid inside that uh, in some of the Power Vault uh, products. I think. Um, and then, of course, Equalogic, and then Compellent. So, I guess they could go higher end. I, I'd be surprised if they did because they don't really have a server, that they don't have a server line that competes with the really high end of IBM, who's been gaining share since, I guess, Sun's acquisition, uh, Oracle's acquisition of Sun, right? So, I, th I, I think they'll probably stay there. So, be looking for more technologies that they could, uh, where they could move more server, more disk. How about, um, I was in the keynote this morning, I, I don't know if you were at the keynote, um, but they were Stuck talking. traffic. They were, they, were, they were sort of talking, hinting at converged infrastructure. Uh, we're seeing that now from certainly VBlock, HP, IBM, Ameri and Dell itself has. NetApp has got NetApp, it it's FlexPod, yeah. and Dell has got you know, its version. Um, do you feel like Dell has to do more, or is converged infrastructure not as uh, appealing to the sort of SMB crowd? Well, that's a good question. Just con uh, converge, you know, anytime you can sort of simplify the acquisition process and implementation process, that's good because it's time to revenue, time to value. Um, on the other hand, the low-end customers, um, you know, sometimes they're extremely price sensitive, so, you know, and they're sometimes a little bit more of a do-it-yourself. Uh, I think one of the things that I've seen that I've been most impressed with, I met with some channel partners this, this last year, and they're picking up more Dell services. They're doing more Dell services, and they're subcontracting with Dell to deliver Dell services. So they may, be, they may write it on their own paper, they may be a subcontractor to Dell services to do implementation, and so I, I'm starting to see some of the Dell partners uh, 
going after the SMB space um, to deal with the time to implement. So, so you're saying that could be a, uh, a, a reseller branded Can be a reseller offering, branded, could be an, uh, a, a Dell, Dell branded, branded offering, offering and, and using more of their reseller partners. So I, that's been a sh sort of a shift to deliver services. So this is all about time to implementing technology, time to value, you know, so. So there's a room full of people this morning, a packed house and um, very strong channel message. Now, you, you yeah. it's interesting, right? Because you think Dell, you it think is. you know direct sales, right? Right. Um, but now, Equalogic was a channel play. Right. Compellent was yeah. a big channel play. Right. So you think Dell is learning from from those? I think I think they are learning. I think it's still a mixed. I think it's still a mixed bag uh, a little bit. So you still hear some reseller partners who are complaining about channel conflict, but you also hear other partners who've been partnering very closely with with Dell who are saying. I'm, you know, they're giving me opportunities to make margin in other ways. So they're making margin off of services. Services and maybe even, you know, networking and servers Network, right. and bringing those, those right. capabilities in. Right, this, I think it's probably the pure, you know, storage only resellers that may, may feel it the most. You know, if, if they're not trying to, if they're not sort of getting on that whole portfolio play, that may be harder. What do you think's happening in the channel? There's a huge channel land grab going on. Um, you see EMC, IBM, HP, Dell, NetApp, they're all going hard after the channel. Lots of spiffs. You s you've seen you know, yeah. HP do things like, say, you know, uh, and, and now recently EMC and all channel products, where, you know, you know right. in well, case I of think HP, EMC is probably the most transformative in turn, because they were, s they were really They were tough. like anti-channel. Right. Yeah, you right. know you can't do services. No, you can't, you know, and yes, I'm taking this deal direct. And, and it's real, they've really transformed over the last, uh, over, or I think they've really transformed yeah, over well the last few years. Yeah, well, as has NetApp, right? I mean, I mean, maybe that's not so much transformed, but it's done a well, really good job there. Yeah, and it's hard to, hard for, harder for me to parse that out with NetApp because, you know, you had, you did have some conflict, um, uh, I think, with the N series going through IBM, you know, and with some of the NetApp resellers, like who owns these deals, and is it a NetApp product, or is it an IBM product yep. that's going in? So, uh, you Well, know. presumably that's an IBM channel issue, right? Not a NetApp channel issue? Or well, it it ultimately it becomes, becomes, it becomes a, a NetApp, NetApp issue, issue, right? If yeah. you're competing with your own product with a different brand. So what about Dell? I mean, does the, the, the what's the channel telling you about Dell? I mean, do they, do they trust that Dell is not going to head fake them? Um, I think that Dell is asking partners to step up and do more. Right, and so I, th I think that uh, that the Dell storage only meaning because remember Dell didn't really have a storage channel, right? Right. But Compellent did, and Equalogic did. Right. And so they're so bringing they those were storage into the only. So you bring them into a systems company portfolio. What's the systems company want you to do? Do they want you to sell just storage? It's great because the margin's better on storage, but they may also want you to sell servers, desktops, and other things. So. So for partners who want to kind of move in that direction, I think they've got a great opportunity. And uh, for partners that just want to f um, ship storage, it may, it may be more of a challenge. I'm going to use this as a form to, f to learn more about that. You know, yeah, I mean, at the end as of you know, the I mean, I w as you know, I work with a, a couple of startups that are s certainly hoping that uh, Dell messes up on the, uh, on, the, um, uh, on the channel side on s pure storage, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, because they'd love to capture that compelling channel, or they'd love to cap capture the Equalogic channel, you know. Yeah, you're talking about startups that could tuck in and try to try to mimic the Equalogic. Yeah, because I mean, compelling and compelling and, and, compel yeah. and Equalogic ran great uh, channel programs, you know. So, yeah, you're absolutely. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Com certainly, compelling uh, was just fabulous in the channel, right? They were all channel and very dedicated to channel. So, right. Okay, well we're here live, this is theCUBE. We're at Dell Storage Forum, I'm here with John MacArthur, uh, former IDC analyst, um, colleague of mine, worked very strong contributor to Wikibon, um, principal at Walden Technology Partners. Um, what do you think Dell has to do at events like this? What is their primary mission to you know, win the day? So, okay, so um, this, is a, this is a Dell Storage Forum, so this, so, one of the things that they did last year when we were down at when we were down in Orlando is it was the first time they were bringing partners and customers uh, together at this at the same venue. So they had reseller partners, they had their technology partners, and they had their customers all together at one venue. And you know, just as the same advice that we gave to IBM, I think we, we give to Dell, and they've done it here. As you said, this is a bigger event. 
than than uh, than Orlando was. Keep up the investment. You know, make 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 your customers understand that you do care about storage, not only as part of this integrated um, sort of systems play, but also as best of breed products. So that. So you get the horses on the track. I mean, you know, this, it's like the storage business is now controlled by, I don't know, four or five leaders, right? right? There's EMC, there's IBM, there's HP, there's Dell, there's NetApp. Right. Right, and then there's... And there's Hitachi at the high and end. Hitachi, and Hitachi, right? yeah. And, and then, and, uh, although I would say Hitachi's not controlling the chessboard, you know, the no, way the other I've five are. And you could argue, yeah, I, I'd put NetApp in that list only because NetApp is, you know, got such a large share and right. of mine, so. You know, Hitachi, you know, makes some acquisitions and it's definitely a, a super credible player, but it's sort yeah. of a tweener. You know, yeah. and then you've got, so let's put Hitachi in there, sort of 5A, right. um, slash six, and then you got a zillion startups out there. Right. Um, it's, it feels like we're never going to see, you know, another company just rock it up and compete with those next, the next net app. It looks like they get to a, a point. Oh, and then because get they get taken out before. Data domain, hey. Isilon, you know, Compellent, Equalogic, 3PAR. Right. Now you're seeing all the Flash guys on a similar trajectory. I mean, don't all those guys right, just I mean, Fusion IO made it to IPO, right? So, and, yeah. they, and, and that, was, that was pretty, that was a pretty remarkable rocket ship there. Yeah, right. and they're still going. I mean, you know, they've got, definitely got some upside. And they're, they've got a grand vision as a platform play, but, um, T but at the same time, somebody could take them out, you know? Somebody could, they've, they've gotten more expensive and, you know, so, try to think who the bidding war would be. Would this be a three-par uh, kind of bidding war, data domain kind of bidding war for Fusion IO? Maybe. I mean, who do you think it would be? Well, I mean, so. Who would be in the game? So to me, the, the, the Fusion IO game comes down to Fusion IO versus Intel. I mean, essentially getting application developers to write to a new memory class storage that's persistent, right? So could the five companies that we just mentioned benefit from that? You know, you know, NetApp, not a systems company. You know, VMware, or EMC, not a, not a systems company, but they got VMware, so they are, by default, right. a systems company. Right. Certainly Dell, IBM, and HP as systems companies. Right. You know, kind of regaining some of that. Um, so yeah, I think, and you do have to think about it, the app, you know, for whom is it an application space where they need to serve it better, and for whom is it an application space where they want to get into, right? So yeah, so <laughs> as so, an expansion. So, so IBM obviously has a you know, strong app, application developer affinity, but that's an expensive acquisition, and IBM doesn't make yeah, they're, they're typically expensive they're trying acquisitions. To, it seems like IBM is really trying to pick up technology early in the, in, in, in the development phase, as they, as they did with Storewise, as they did with uh, Diligent. As, you know, XIV. XIV was relatively yeah, early. They're, they're paying... You know, um, a lot you know, less. A fraction. Yeah, half of what, half or less of what Dell paid for Compellent, as an example. So, but Compellent was, you know, ten years, ten years of maturity. Yeah, basically a third of what. Com uh, yeah, Dell actually, paid for they s they said your number was too high. Your your at, at right. I mean, we we were we oh, were estimating we were no. estimating on the XIV because it wasn't. Oh, it, yeah, it was over three hundred though, right? Uh, the, actually, said no. someone said, it, not so much, but. Um, yeah, okay. But anyway, regardless, it's know. nowhere near the compelling. Let's peg it at roughly 300, yeah, I mean, I somewhere around there. It was right. hundreds of millions, right? Right. Yeah, so, so. Um, and as I said, Dell's got a little bit of a, uh, of a strategy of doing a little bit of both, buying some technologies and buying big companies. I, EMC's ac acquisition of Extreme IO was sort of. Another, Rich Napolitano said my number was high there too, but you know, I, I was saying it was north of 400, which yeah. I think it was. Yeah. And, uh, but they also had a stake in the company. Right. Yeah, so maybe they're backing that out. Maybe they're backing that out. And um, yeah, well, one, one guy that I talked to who's really bright uh, th you know, had, had a conspiracy theory that you know, NetApp was bidding for it just to get EMC to pay more than they would otherwise have to, knowing that EMC had last look. So I don't know. I have to. Uh, well, yeah, you heard NetApp was bidding on that, right? Right. And in fact, I had heard that NetApp put but a higher ne bid in. Right, but that maybe NetApp didn't really want it, but they just wanted EMC to pay more. <laughs> so it's a head fake. <laughs> this is not my. This is not my thesis. It was a, a friend shared that thesis. So well, NetApp. But, it's a, but it's, uh, you know, is NetApp an interesting company. They're, they're, a lot of people are taking shots at NetApp right now because their growth hasn't been what it they is. They are but right. But here's the thing: is is we called this uh, uh, several times. The NetApp has a very tough compare right now. You know, you knew this was coming, and Georgians has been 
really right. trying to expand the in TAM. In that period of transition. The Ingenio acquisition was all about TAM expansion, and so, um, so they're taking a lot of heat right now, but NetApp is not you know, going away. NetApp is a really solid company with a really strong channel, a great portfolio, right. so and you're heading right out there. To, you're heading out to meet with them? And next week they got their analyst meeting, and that's always a big highlight, yeah. so we've got a lot of questions there. I'll be interested uh, to hear back from you, and I'll watch, and I'll obviously watch the uh, live stream, but um, I'll be interested to hear sort of how they're dealing with the, in, the Ingenio acquisition, and particularly as it relates to sort of the tailing down, and these are long tails, so, but the tailing down of the Ingenio OEM relationships with Oracle, with, um, with, with, with um, uh, IBM, and, and also I think with, with Dell, Dell, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so. Okay, so we're getting the hook, John. Uh, okay. Thanks for coming on and appreciate My your pleasure. perspectives. Uh, keep it right there, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back with the Dell Storage Forum 12 with our next guest. <laughs>